web crawling is where we left off last time. And that's a large part of a search engine, the discovery of various different websites. But discovery isn't everything. We actually do need to rank and show the user the websites they want to find. So let's do that using keywords. Now, some could argue that website ranking can be done without keywords, but for this simple setup to start off with, we will be using it and it'll suffice for now. And this is actually how old search engines worked as well. They would simply just take the word in that you typed in the search engine, find that word in different websites, and then show those websites. So the question is now how to obtain those keywords. So just as we parsed these A tags or anchor tags on the HTML to discover various links on a website, we, just, we will just be parsing other tags, such as the title tag or different heading tags. And some forms of the meta tag. The title is pretty self-explanatory. It's the title of the website, and you can actually find it at the top of a Chrome tab, like this. Heading tags are kind of like the headings in a word processor like Google Docs or Microsoft Word. They simply outline large sections of the page. Now, because websites are built dynamically now, and not just hard-coded with HTML. Sometimes these headings aren't quite as descriptive as they would normally be, but we're gonna go ahead and assume that they are just to make things simple. So we'll parse these headings and store all the keywords within those headings. Now the meta tag, as discussed in the previous part, has many different attributes that can be used. And we're mainly going to be looking at the description attribute, which will give a description of the website and use those as keywords as well. We'll then take all of these words in the title, headings, and description, and put all these words out into a big list and store it in our database. And that way when we search for something, we just match these keywords and display websites that have those keywords. And this will be our basis of our search engine, at least for now, just to get started. So in the last part, I actually did go over the code as to how we are going to obtain these keywords, but I'll go ahead and explain it really quick again. So as you can see here, we have these, this meta tag here, which previously we used for a site name or a title, and now we're going to be using its description. So we're going to take the description of the meta tag and then examine its content, which is just a paragraph explaining a description of the website. And then we're going to make it alphanumerical, which means taking away any characters that aren't a number or a letter. Then we'll use this make keywords function, which will just take in a big string, which is the paragraph, and separate it out into individual words in a big list. We'll then add this to our word list, where we'll also combine that with keywords from headings and the title as well. So if we scroll down, we can see our A tags here, and then we have heading tags. So we'll take all heading tags, and we'll make them all into keywords, make them alphanumerical, and then add it to our word list. So now our word list contains information regarding the description of a website, uh, the title of a website is also made into keywords, and then also the headings of the website are also made into keywords. We then take all of this, all these words, and then store it in a text file. And so if we look at our text file here, we'll see all of our information. So we have the URL of the website, the title of a website, and then the keywords of it. And you can see that there are hashtags separating each piece of information, and that's what's called a delimiter. Now a delimiter just separates pieces of information, and we could just use a space, but actually spaces are used to separate keywords, and there could be a space in the title as well, so we don't want to use that. What we want to use is a character that isn't being used anywhere else, so that way we can parse it later and know that when we see a hashtag, we know that there's a new section of information. So everything to the left of this first hashtag is just the URL, and then after the first hashtag, it'll always be the title, and then after the last hashtag, it'll always be a list of keywords. And you can scroll through this and see all a bunch of all the different websites we have here. So we can see like android.com, here's the title, uh, Android the platform pushing what's possible, and then we see keywords. So we have Android, the platform pushing possible. So that's coming from the title. We have safety at, a, at every 11 introducing help move. Um, it starts getting a little bit hard to read, but all of these words 
are related to the headings of the website. And we can see that some of these websites have a huge amount of keywords. Now, what are we actually going to do with this text file? We're actually going to go ahead and store it in an SQL database. But what is an SQL database? SQL stands for Structured Query Language. And you can think of it as like a spreadsheet, but better. And by that, I mean a spreadsheet with like its own programming language, which is used to structure and query parts of it. And not only do that, but in a really optimized way. And that's why it's ideal for storing large chunks of information and then querying it really fast. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing with our search engine. We're going to be storing all of this information, all of these keywords and URLs, and then we're going to be matching keywords and it's going because SQL is so optimized, we'll be able to match keywords and find the corresponding websites quite fast. So how do we actually store that in a database? Now our database is going to be on our web server. So I'm going to go on my own website and create an SQL database. So this is PHP My Admin. It's the program that we're using to view our SQL database. So this actually comes with my web hosting plan. So I can go ahead and create these databases. So this is a database called Search2 because I've already created one before. But in here we can see two different tables. Now we're going to be focusing on our websites table. So I actually created this table here. And if we look at its structure, we can see that there's a few different columns. We have the title, the URL, and keywords. And so the title is a type of text. URL is also text and keywords because that can get quite long, is considered a long text. And that's just the types of information that we're storing here. And so we can go ahead and actually add on some information here. And we can do this manually if we go to this insert tab. So we can go ahead and add a title. So the title of a website could be Google. The URL would be google.com. And keywords might be Google or Android or search engine. And we'll just separate it by spaces. And then we'll go ahead and insert that row. If we go back to browse then, we can see that in our title we have Google, URL, google.com, and then we can see our keywords here. And so we can go ahead and manually type all of these in from our text document, or we can write a program that will parse out all of that information in our text document and then send it all to this SQL database. This is the SQL Python script that I wrote, which will parse out all of those URLs from that text file and then upload it to my SQL database. So Python actually has a few different libraries that can interface with these SQL databases. And so what we're going to do is first open up our data.txt file. We'll go ahead and split all the lines so that we can get indiv each individual row. And then we'll go ahead, here's a function to create our connection to the database. This is our primary SQL command. So we have an insert keyword. We're going to go ahead and insert a piece of information into the website's table. We're going to insert the URL, title, and keywords. And then we'll specify those values here. We'll then put these diff three different values in a little array here, and then go through each line in that text file, find each delimiter, which is a hashtag, and split that up, and then just format it correctly, and then send it to the database. So let's go ahead and run this SQL script. We'll see that our connection was successful, it was executing the command, and then committing it. So now if we go back to our database here and give it a quick refresh, we'll see all of the information that we sent. And this is all directly straight from our web crawler, which is pretty cool. So now that we got our SQL database set up, we need a way for the user to type in their search query. So we're going to create a simple HTML page to do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. All we need to do is just save that as an HTML document, open up Chrome, and then give it a refresh. And there's our 
search. So HTML is a client-side language, which means that the web server sends the HTML to the client, and then the web browser is the one who parses the HTML and displays it. There are actually back-end languages as well, which run on the server side, and one of those is called PHP. So PHP will run on the server, it doesn't run on a user's web browser, but HTML can send information to the server side. The server can then use its PHP to select information from our SQL database and send it back to the user as HTML for a web browser to display. So under our form here, we're actually going to specify an action and we're going to write a query.php script. And so we're going to consider this a post method here. So that way when we type in something, it'll send it to our PHP script, which we haven't written yet. So let's go ahead and write that. All right, so this is our PHP script that we're going to be using. So this is all corresponding to our SQL database. We're gonna create a connection to it, check the connection, and then here is our query. So when we send the query from our HTML page to this PHP script, it's running in as a post method here, and we specified it as a search query, and we're going to store that as a variable called query. We're then going to run this SQL command here. So this SQL command looks a little complicated. All it's really doing is just making sure to ignore any kind of casing, like lowercase or uppercase, and then just find that word in each column, regardless of where it is. We're then going to take all of those rows and loop through them here, we're going to add it to an array, and then we're going to echo out some HTML. Display the title, then the URL, and then actually make it a URL itself so that we can click on it. You can see that there's an A tag here. And if there aren't any results, we'll just display no results. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that would look like. So here is our search page. We'll go ahead and type something in, like Google, and go ahead and click search. And there we go, there's our results. So right now it's not really ranked by anything other than just displaying any website that has the keyword Google in it anywhere, whether it be in its title, its URL, or in its keyword list. And it'll go ahead and print all those out. So what's actually really cool to realize is that that PHP script in the on the back end is never visible to the user. If you actually right click a page on Chrome, you can click inspect over here and look at all of its HTML code. If we look back at this PHP script, we can see that it echoed out some HTML. It's essentially printing out HTML code to the user, and the user will only view its printed out HTML. We, the user will never see any of this other code. It's all handled on the server side. Now, although this code is fully functional, there are plenty of improvements that could be made. In fact, pretty much all modern search engines today use much more than just keyword matching to rank websites. So, in the next part, we'll explore some of those. But until then, thanks for watching.